Hey everybody, this is Deborah again over at Coming Soon Homes for training version two, or round two, excuse me. This is gonna be more geared towards the back end of the website, what you should have to do to kind of get your listings started on the site, start adding them, start managing them, and start editing and managing your leads as they come in. So this is very, very easy. So when you're ready to hop into the back end, each one of you should already be provided with a login. Basically your uh, personal login should be your email address as your username and a temporary password, all under case coming soon. Um, you can edit and change that password the moment that you hop into your account and edit your account at that time. Now, when you're ready to go into the back end, you'll literally go to comingsoonhomes.com and just type in slash admin behind it. When you type in slash admin, you're going to basically hit a login screen like this. You can type in your username and your password and log in. Later on, keep in mind that you can uh, connect your login account with Facebook. So in case you never want to have to deal with entering your username or password again, you can connect your Facebook account so it will auto log you in every time you need to hop in again, which definitely makes it easier. So what you should see now, it's going to be a little bit different for each of you because if you're an agent, when you log into the back end, you should only be able to see and manage your listings, your information, your leads, your profile. We want to make sure that it's very, very fair, clean and concise across the entire firm. So again, if you're an agent and you're logging into your own back end agent account, the only information you should be able to see is your own listings, your own profile, your own leads, etc. cetera. Um, I think there's only one or two people your admins, and then Patricia, obviously, that will have company owner access. So if you ever log into the back end and you can't see or you can't figure out, you know, if you have the right access to do something or something's not showing up, just reach out to either Patricia, your admins, or me directly, and we'll be able to iron that out for you. So when you hop in the back end, the first thing you're going to notice is just a pretty basic dashboard view. The darker blue box will show you total number of leads brought in. Lighter blue box will show you total number of properties on the site. Purple box is total number of user accounts, and then the orange box is to submit a site support request. Now, you can always submit an issue directly to me via email or phone, but in case there's a technical issue, if there's something on the back end that's not working right, you have a recommendation to make something easier, you can actually submit that request ticket right there. It goes directly to my developer, and then we'll work in tandem to make sure that issue or concern is ironed out rather quickly. Now, below that, um, you probably won't use these too frequently, but just be aware that they're there. If you have buyers that are favoriting specific listings of yours, those favorite reports will be here um, within the past seven days. Same thing for any buyers that have requested a showing, and then same thing for any contact requests that have been made in the past seven days. Now, I like to kind of roll down the back or the left side of this and move around just a little bit. I'm not going to cover everything in the back end today because not everything is going to be viable for the agents. So I'm just going to do what's relevant to you. Now, if you're an agent logging into the back end the first time, <coughs> excuse me, the first thing I'm going to want you to do when you log in is go under accounts and the agent section. Each one of you should uh, have your login. Just find your name, hit edit as the action. I'm going to use this one as an example. And this is basically your own profile information and account. First thing I recommend doing is find your agent account, hop in it, edit it, and add anything else that you want to beef up your profile. The information you add on here is basically what shows on the public side of the site on your own landing page. So it's imperative that you fill this up as much as possible, make yourself look like a rock star, whatever you need to do. <coughs> we have plenty of options to add stuff onto this page. Now, I'm going to skip this part for now and cover that in the marketing tutorial, so I'm just not going to cover that right now. Just be aware that each one of you have your own custom agent codes. You can copy and paste this code and add it to the end of any link on your Scottsdale Homes for Sale coming soon site. That way, anybody that clicks your link that you drive traffic to, you are guaranteed those leads. I'll cover that a little bit deeper if that doesn't make sense to you um, in the marketing tutorial following this one. Now below that is account settings. You should always be enabled and always be featured. Um, your role should always be set agent. I think the only people that can change the role is actually a company owner or myself. So again, in case you ever log into the back end and you're not seeing something you need access to, just let us know and we can change your role to update and upgrade, excuse me, how much or how little access you have into the back end. Your username should be your, your email and then you can go, type right back in here. Just start typing out a new password you want. Scroll down to the bottom and make sure you save it. Then your new password will be updated. 
You can link your Facebook account right here so that way it makes it easier to log into the back end the next time you hop in. And then below here is just very basic user information. So name, email, if you have multiple phone numbers, if you wanna add your license, a specific title, if you have your own website, uh, social media profiles, if you would like your own Zillow or Trulia ratings to display as well, your headshot, and then a bio. I highly recommend each of you add a bio in here. Even if you have videos or pictures, you can embed videos and pictures in this, or just copy and paste a bio and put it in here. Um, your group settings should probably stay the same because you're all in the same office, same company, all that good stuff. And then you'll be good to go and hit save. Then your account should be good and you're basically off to the races at that point. Your account should be set up. Below that, if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see a section called leads. So when leads are coming into your system, they'll basically start filing into here. We can integrate also with CRM systems. So if you have your own CRM and you want to see if your leads can get sucked through your CRM, just reach out to me or Patricia directly and we can try and manage that and uh, customize the uh, lead funneling process. But when you hop in your back end, let me actually hop in and another back end just to show you because you guys don't have leads on your site yet. Kind of what that lead panel will look like. It'll look very similar to yours, obviously, just with a whole bunch of data in it. So your lead panel will look very similar to this. It'll show you the lead's name, their email, who the lead was assigned to, so the agent it was assigned to, the source that it came in as, the property address, and then the specific date it came in. Now, if you want more information on that lead, sometimes you can get more by hitting edit in the action. And what I mean by that is it might show you if they have favorited any properties, saved any searches. So as the agent, you have a little bit more information on maybe what they're gearing towards or looking for so it can make it easier. But that's basically your lead data. So for those of you that do email marketing, Facebook retargeting campaigns, anything like that, keep in mind you can also export your leads as a CSV so you can do anything else with those leads that you might need to do directly that way. Um, some clients also like to manually add leads into the system. So if you don't have a CRM system connected, you could manually add leads. Maybe if you get signed calls off your coming soon listings or, you know, a response off an email marketing piece or a blog or something like that, you can manually add leads as well. Um, and that's pretty much it under accounts. Now I'm going to go under properties. So the first, the second thing actually, so the first thing, let me recap, is to go and find your agent account, edit and add to your agent account, really beef it up, make it full, save it, and then go into properties and begin adding your listings. Now, first thing, I know it sounds mundane, you're probably going to roll your eyes at me for a second, but it's really important that you go ahead and add all of your current active listings. Um, I don't, I mean, really add all of your active listings, get them on there. It will start showing up listings on your site and start filling it up while you're building your coming soon inventory. So go in here to your property section under properties and you're going to come to the right side and hit add a property. Now keep in mind, you don't have to have a ton of information just to get a listing initially in the system. It's okay if all you have is the address, the community name, and number of beds and baths, and maybe a front picture. If that's all you have, that's okay. Um, there's so many agents that I talk to and I'm like, why isn't your coming soon listing on the system? And they're like, oh, I haven't determined the price, or oh, I don't have a picture, or oh, I don't have verbiage yet still get the listing on the site because the more time you give your listings on your coming soon site and you're promoting it, the more leads you're going to generate. So it's imperative that even if you just have the very minimal information on that listing, get it in the site and get it kind of formulated. Now, when you're adding a property into the site, the first thing you're going to notice are these little boxes up top. Once you save a new listing, you can always go back in that listing, edit it, add to it, remove things from it, but it will also start upticking kind of a, a report here of how many views it's had, how many leads that property's had, contact requests, showing requests, if anybody's favored it, etc. Below that, you'll always see this enabled box. 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to always want this box checked. That means that you are ready for that property to show live on the site and everyone can start basically requesting more information off of it. Now, the only time, like the point, couple points percentage that you might have this unchecked is let's say you just got the listing um, right before the holidays, the seller says, go ahead and put it on the site, but I do not want it publicly displayed yet. 
um, maybe because they don't want people driving by their house during the holidays. They just, you know, if you want to be proactive to get your data entry done, you could do that and just leave it enabled uh, or unchecked. But the moment you're ready for that property to show up live on the site, go ahead and check that box. MLS number, you can put that once you have that. Neighborhood is actually extremely important. You will notice rolling down this list, the only things that are actually required for a listing have an asterisk on it. But let me tell you, y'all, do not just go down and look for what the asterisks are. The more information you have on your coming soon listings as it goes through the process, the better results you will get. I guarantee it 100%. I see it in every market across this country. And the more information you have on the property, the more results and leads you will generate. So adding the neighborhood, even though it's not required, that is super important. And let me explain why. If buyers, uh, let's say, drive by one of your coming soon listings, they see a coming soon rider and they didn't have time to grab the address or even street name of that property. I've been there. That's happened. Let's say the only thing they could get was the community name. Well, if they go on the public side of the site and start typing in the community name, we want to make sure your listing shows up if they type in the community. So please make sure that you're adding that community name. And truthfully, you should have that right off the bat when you're entering a new property. If anything, if you didn't get it when you walked out of the listing, do a Google search. It's real easy. So just make sure that that neighborhood is spelled out properly on here. And that way your listing will pull up if someone does specifically type in that community name. Then you'll type in the street, the actual zip code and city. You can, they're pre-populated there. If you ever go in here and do not find a zip code that you need, just shoot me an email. We'll be able to add it for you. And then we have two sections for prices. Um, I think out west, uh, this is a lot more prominent of using a price range. I think this is also a great thing for coming soon of using a price range. I guarantee there's plenty of you that have, you know, maybe not even gotten a listing sometimes because you and the homeowner couldn't come to an agreement on what the actual listing price should be. Well, this is the perfect scenario. Let's say you have a luxury listing. You're doing a four weeks of coming soon pre-marketing before you open the doors for showings. Let's say you think it should sell at $600,000 and the homeowner thinks it should sell at $700,000. You can say, no, no worries, Mr. Seller. Sign an agreement with me. We can feel out the market for two weeks. We'll do a price range between six hundred and seven hundred thousand for that week we'll feel out the market see how much response and feedback we get and then the remaining two weeks that it's coming soon we're going to actually determine that set price and push all that traffic there so you can actually leverage price range a number of different ways while it's coming soon but in case you just want to do a listing price go ahead and just put your listing price just make sure there's no kind of dollar signs just make sure you're your formatting things as we explain in the red here. If you do decide to use a price range, we still ask you to add a listing price. If you use a price range, the price range is what the public will see. The listing price they will not see, but we still want you to put a dollar amount in there. That way, if people are searching for properties within a specific price point, we wanna make sure it pulls up. So at least just put the minimum amount here in the listing price if you are indeed going to display a price range. Now, listing date and time is one of the most important things that you have set in mind um, when you walk out of that property. You should already have had a conversation with the seller asking, when do you need to move out? How long do you think repairs will take? When will photography be done? And then that is the ideal date that that property will be going active into MLS and begin showings at that time. So you need to have that date preset basically in the future if it's coming soon. Now, if you're going in here to add active listings just to start adding the properties to the site, this date and time should be sometime in the past. Because if it's in the past, it's gonna show up in the proper section. This, this area right here is basically what moves the listing depending on where it's at based on that time clock. So again, if the property is already active, select a date in the past. If your property is coming soon, select the date the listing will be going active. Pretty simple. If you have questions on that, let me know. Now, listing type, very basic listing transaction. Listing status, as I mentioned earlier, it handles the coming soon slash active status. So technically to the computer system, every single listing will be coming soon slash active status until you go in there and change the status to under contract. That's where I mentioned that I highly recommend you go into the system and change when your property goes under contract. So that nice big green under contract banner shows up and then just pop back into the site once more officially, once your property is sold. So then your sold listing then moves into the success stories section. Now, 
teaser text is actually really, really important. And the reason it's important is because this teaser text is basically, it has a 30 character maximum. And it's truthfully what enables people to want to click on your listing versus others in your firm. So it's this red text here. So you can get creative. Don't just put coming soon. Don't just put brand new. Don't just put new construction. Get creative and use that teaser text as the biggest feature, call to action, whatever it might be about that home to really enable people to want to click on it. Plenty of space to spread out, to spread out ranch home on over an acre, historic renovated beauty. So use that as really creative text, almost like secondary verbiage per se, but in a really short sentence. Um, then from here down is very basic. So year built, square footage, lot size, number of beds, bass, garage types, that kind of thing. The features section, I highly recommend you just put a bullet point list here. So I would bullet point, you know, hardwood floors, stainless steel appliances, um, custom cabinetry, all of that stuff. Just bullet point a quick list of the features that you recognized about that home. You can do an easy Google search away. So many agents never put the schools in there. And I honestly, it's just, that's out of straight laziness. Take two extra minutes to do a Google search on finding these properties. So many people want to know what schools their kids will be in when they're looking at listings. So it's imperative you take a couple extra minutes to fill in this information um, as you can. Even if you don't do this day one, do it day three or day four. Um, definitely as quickly as possible though. Um, and then your first set of remarks is basically your, your listing verbiage. So about the home, about the community, your basic you know, stuff, you would technically put in MLS. Keep in mind, however, you know better than anybody that MLS is very restrictive. You can only have a certain number of characters. You can only do things a certain way. You cannot have branding on your stuff. Use your coming soon program to be more creative and get more energy around your listings. It is such an, an important thing to understand is that with now the way that this industry is moving, you need to make your listing stand out. So what I recommend is don't just put your bland old MLS verbiage in here. Take a couple extra minutes to really craft some fun, engaging verbiage. I literally just saw a post a couple days ago where a home buyer saw a listing. They didn't even see pictures of the property and they straight up said that they would buy the home because of the way the agent basically talked about the property and the verbiage. And it was hilarious because it was so casual and laid back and real and humanized, right? When I see verbiage, you know, like four bedroom, two bath, exquisite kitchen with, you know, an Epicurean kitchen. I mean, come on, right? So really humanize your verbiage and get more creative with coming soon because there's no maximum, no minimum with your verbiage here. You can put as much or as little as you want, but the more you have, the more your property will get more inquiries. I guarantee it. Second set of remarks we have is just an option. This might work for some of your properties, maybe for families who have raised their kids in a home for years and years and they love the community. A lot of our clients will actually reach out to their homeowner and say, would you like to share your home story with your prospective buyer that's gonna purchase your property? And a lot of our homeowners will email back the agent, literally a letter that they've written saying, dear buyer, here's what we love about our home. We recently did this to update it and renovate it. Um, our average monthly utility bills are our you know, favorite local events that happen around the year is. And so those are the kind of details that as a realtor, you can't provide, but boy, as a homeowner, they can go all day long and give really up-to-date information on why they should love or even consider that property in the first place. And we have literally seen properties sell because buyers have read that homeowner letter. So the more and more you can involve even your sellers in your coming soon process, the better. So imagine the possibilities you could have. Now up top, once you enter the address and location, it will automatically add the latitude and longitude for you. If you do any kind of video tours, 3D Matterport, drone tours, honestly, any kind of video for your listings, <coughs> this is where you're going to want to put it. Um, so this is not just copying and pasting a tour link into this section. You actually need an embed code. So I would recommend going to your tour company and saying, when you provide me each of my new, each of my new listing videos, please provide me an embed code. If they can't do that, I've given you a little sneak, uh, a sneak peek here. You can use embedly. Just click that little link we've provided, copy and paste the tour link in here and hit embed. It will literally populate a free embed code for you, which then you will copy and paste that embed code and paste it back in here. That way the video sits right on top of the listing. 
me see if I can find a good example for you because it's really, really important that you see how this is done because we want to make sure that people aren't driven off of the website, right? We want to make sure that they're staying on the website no matter what they're looking at. Um, I think this one has one. So that's why it's important that you embed a video and not link it. So that way they can watch the video right off the page there. So important. Now below that, you can tag yourself as the agent. And then if you have a co-agent scenario, and then you're going to go ahead and hit save. Now what's going to happen is when you hit save, the whole page is going to reload on you. So let me just show you an example. Let's just say I just entered all this information on that first listing. I hit save, the whole page reloaded on me. Once your property starts getting views, that's where I mentioned earlier, you'll start seeing these numbers uptick. You will also, once that page reloads, see it will shoot you out a property URL. I always, always, always recommend once you add a new listing and it reloads the page after it's saved, click that click that little link it provides you just to double verify the information because sometimes it look, you know, with technology, you just want to make sure it looks right. So make sure your pictures are good. None of them are rotated. Roll through this little um, arrow icon to make sure your information is displaying and your, you know, content that you've added here within these tags. So just a little kind of side check there I recommend doing. Now, if you continue scrolling down, you're going to notice three new sections populate. One for pictures, one for floor plans, and one for documents. All three of these sections are mass upload options. You can upload as many as you want. Just keep in mind that you can move around the pictures. And I recommend the first picture in this row is the best picture you have. So this is actually a coming soon listing. It looks like the interior was actually in really good shape. So the agent was able to get a little bit more pictures um, to help promote that listing while she's waiting on her professional stuff. So honestly, the more pictures you can get, the better, but show the best parts of the home. Even if you just take a quick picture of the double oven that everybody loves, the gorgeous coffered ceiling and a front picture of the home. I mean, use the content you get to tease the market about that house. It's really, really powerful. Um, then you can add floor plans if you do floor plan images and any documents. So we have clients that like to add HOA disclosures, mineral rights disclosures, anything like that. And if you continue scrolling, you'll actually see a last section display called a property seller account. And our clients absolutely love this because this is where you get to kind of inform your seller of what's going on. And the system actually handles that on behalf of the agent, you that are assigned to that property. So when you add a property and it reloads on you, then you can add pictures, documents, anything like that. You continue scrolling and you'll see the seller account. Go ahead and add your seller name, their email, and if they have a spouse, do the same thing. We ask that you as the agent create a username and password account for that seller. That way, the seller, once you hit save seller, they're actually going to get an email customized basically like it's coming from you as their agent saying, welcome to coming soon homes. I just wanted to give you access to this site. Check out your home. Watch the view count rise. Let me actually see if I can show you an example of this. This is a good example. So this is what a seller would receive on behalf of you if you want to send that out. It says your home has just been added to Coming Soon Homes. Here's your login. So that's where I mentioned you will provide and create a username and password for them. A lot of our clients like to put maybe their um, their email as their username or their address as their username and their phone number as the password. Whatever you think is will be easiest for them to remember, that's what I would create their username and password for. And then automatically you'll see this box checked to send a welcome email. So this is the email that the seller will get. They'll get their login information. It'll auto pull the first picture of the property that you've uploaded and they can quickly just hit the view my home button. It will redirect them specifically to check out their home on the coming soon site, which is a really, really cool experience. And they get all excited about watching that view count rise. Now, Last but not least is at the bottom of that email, whoever was the agent assigned to that listing is the one that's contact information will be displayed at the bottom. So literally the email looks like it, it reads and feels and was created by you. And you as the agent are also CC'd on these emails so you know that that email was sent out on behalf of you as well. So it's a really great little asset tool to incorporate your seller into the process. So hit save seller, immediately they'll be sent that welcome email and you'll be good to go. <clears throat> so recap real quick. First thing you need to do when you hop into your back end is go into your agent account, edit it, update your password, add your bio, really perfect your agent account so the public sees you in the best light possible. The second thing you need to do is go into the property section and add all of your active listings. 
when you add your active listings, that date and time should be in the past. Then I'd go ahead and add maybe between three to five, maybe more if you want, of your most recently sold properties. That way your success story section will start to display on your site. Then if you have any open houses coming up in the next few weeks, I would honestly go ahead and schedule those out as well. Last but not least, I'd then go ahead and add any of your coming soon listings. Um, your coming soon listings will obviously, that date and time will be in the future. So just make sure that you have all your listings possible on your site as quickly as you can. Um, it will be a little bit tedious in the initial, but let me tell you, you will start generating so much success and leads off this program if we can get this running and up and running right. So add your properties to the site. If you're ready to add open houses, we have a separate section to schedule open houses. Just hit that, come to the right side, hit add an open house. Any of the properties that you've added to your site will display. Just hit the address, put the date, start time, end time, any notes, maybe about the agent on duty, if there's a theme, anything like that, you can put that in there. And that way your open houses will then display on your open house section, which is handy. Um, from there, it's pretty much, that's honestly pretty much it. I might stop about here. Um, integrations, each one of you, instead of seeing company here, you will actually see an agent integrations tab. If you go to your agent integrations tab, each one of you are provided a widget. I'm going to talk to you more about this in the third follow-up video, which is specifically about marketing, but that is a great way to display your coming soon listings on your own websites that you might already have. Um, and then this is also where we will go in and integrate your CRM if you are interested in having a CRM integrated for your leads. So just keep me posted if you do have additional questions on that. That at least will get you through adding, adding properties, editing your profile, getting into the system, and starting to work through kind of the more administrative things. Um, the third video I'm going to be following up with is specifically geared towards marketing, how you generate leads, how to ensure that you're um, converting and generating more listings off of prior success. So get excited for that last video. Hope this was helpful for you. Again, if you have any additional questions, feel free to always reach out to me at 919-232-9239 or shoot me an email at Deborah, D-E-B-O-R-A-H, at comingsoonhomes.com.